Okay, well, I just wanted to do a brief update on the pickup truck here. Let's open the hood. So, I have been receiving a lot of questions regarding how things are going with kind of the oil consumption stuff. So, the truck's been running pretty well. Um, as you know from some of my previous videos, I fooled around with the baffle and I've been having oil going in the catch can. Now, lately, one thing I did was I blocked off the idle air control valve with that little tape. You know, you put a piece of tape in there and roll the lip over and block off that hole. Interestingly, that's once the truck heats up, it runs real well. So uh, the other thing is it almost seems like blocking that hole off with a piece of tape helps the airflow. And I'm, I'm wondering if there's maybe some turbulence at that little hole which backs things up. Because I could swear when I block that off, the truck runs way better. Now, perhaps that's because it takes the idle air control valve out of the mix. Could be my imagination. I'm not really sure. Overall, truck's been running really fabulous. I've been struggling back and forth with the catch can issue. Uh, and it's very difficult to sort out exactly what's going on. I think part of my problem was I had my uh, dual channel PCV valve adjusted incorrectly. Um, I had For a while I had it to where the cruise circuit was not activating at the proper uh, time. In fact, it wasn't activating at all. So I inadvertently had gotten so far off the map with my adjustments that I was running a fixed orifice uh, PCV valve. And as I might have shown in some of my other videos, but I'll just show it again. I have, you can kind of see here, something a little messed up on the dash there, but you can see I have here a, a suction gauge from, from an airplane. And that shows zero to 10 inches of uh, vacuum, inches of mercury. So this runs to the diagnostic port of this dual channel PCV valve. And you can see it right there. So that goes into the dash. And, and that port is actually there for adjusting this PCV valve when you get it. But I run it all the time so that in real time I can monitor what's going on with the kind of the crankcase vacuum levels. And it's been a fascinating uh, learning experience with regard to the truck. Now, uh, <clears throat> I very closely monitor the amount of oil down to uh, you know milliliters. I use a, a graduated uh, scientific beaker to measure the amount of oil. Uh, I also check the level of the oil in the in the uh, motor very carefully and the motor has been consuming oil but it seems like it's been going down. Um, and like I say for a while I was struggling with having a lot of oil in the catch can. Now what was what was interesting is if I adjust the PCV valve here so that I have, you know, one or two inches of vacuum while I drive, uh, the truck runs phenomenally well. And I suspect that has to do with the, you know, the constant negative pressure inside the crankcase helping the rings to seal. Um, also, just in general, having the oil catch can is nice from two standpoints. It allows you to monitor the amount of oil being drawn out of the motor, which is helpful. And two, it keeps the intake system, you know, extra clean. Now you also on the Toyota 22RE have the fresh air breather, which if I'm not mistaken, it serves two purposes, not just one. So <clears throat> this is metered air, which is drawn into the motor to replace the air which is being drawn 
out through the positive crankcase ventilation system. And, and it must be metered air because if you follow the, the route of the air, it goes into the motor and then it comes through here. And ultimately it winds up inside the engine being combusted. So the, so the ECU and the, the air fuel meter must account for that. Um, <clears throat> if you put a breather on your motor, by the way, you are introducing inadvertently unmetered air, which can cause problems with your air fuel ratio stuff. Now on my truck, uh, off the header down there, I have a wideband O2 uh, uh, sensor, and I have an, an AEM uh, wideband gauge, which allows me to monitor the air fuel ratio as I drive and when the truck is idling and so forth. So uh, that's also real helpful. Uh, but the other thing that this, the other purpose that this serves, I believe, is when you do get pressure inside the engine, this acts as somewhat of a bypass pressure relief valve. So pressure from the crankcase, if it's not sufficiently being evacuated by the PCV system, can uh, reverse here and go out and be drawn into the intake. So that's something to keep in mind with this particular hose right here. Now I've tried all kinds of different things over the years, uh, check valves, eliminating this, putting uh, orifice reduction clear down to one sixteenth of an inch. None of that. None of that really helps out too much. Um, ultimately, what has been working well is running the PCV, the adjustable circuit here, su such that at idle, when the engine vacuum is fairly high, this uh, PCV valve limits the amount of crankcase vacuum to about half of an inch of vacuum. So in other words, when you're cruising down the highway off throttle a little bit, or you're idling in a, at a signal and the engine is pulling, you know, 18 inches or 17 inches of, of vacuum at idle, or for example, when you're going down a hill decelerating and the, and the throttle plate is closed and you're pulling 22 or 24, inches of vacuum, the smaller orifice of this dual channel PCV valve will restrict it down so that uh, the motor is only getting a suction of half an inch of, of uh, vacuum in order to alleviate whatever uh, pressure is being built up in the crankcase. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now under load, wide open throttle, obviously the, the amount of vacuum present in the intake system drops down to three, four, five, maybe as low as one or zero inches under wide open throttle. And that's, of course, precisely when you need vacuum the most because the engine is running at five, 6,000 RPMs under heavy load and it's producing a lot of blow by, which is pressurizing your crankcase. That's when the secondary uh, part of this uh, PCV dual channel uh, device comes into play and it allows you to have a secondary system that when vacuum dips you can adjust at what point it transitions into allowing more of the vacuum you have to be utilized. Now that's this adjustment right here um, and that presses upon a spring which dictates how, at what point does the secondary stage shut off? In other words, does it, does it only, does it turn off at three inches of vacuum? Or does it turn off at eight inches of vacuum? And that, that dictates when that secondary transition occurs. Now I have it currently set so that it opens up additional, an, an additional secondary orifice in addition to the baseline uh, idle setting uh, at around four inches. So in other words, if I start to accelerate and the vacuum in the intake manifold dips down around four inches of vacuum or lower, you know, two inches or, or on full throttle acceleration, maybe one or zero inches, then that secondary part will open and give me more of the available lower vacuum to do its job precisely at the time when the engine is producing a lot of blow-by. 
And I found that having that transition occur somewhere around three and four inches of vacuum seems to, to work really well. Now, when cruising around on the highway, I'm able to go about 25 miles and I only see around two to two and a half milliliters of oil accumulate in the catch can. So if you just, you know, if you just do the math, uh, you know, for every 250 miles, you would have about 25 milliliters of oil, which is uh, less than one ounce of oil. And this catch can can comfortably hold two to three uh, ounces of oil. So that gives me pretty good range. The thing that I'm still struggling with is that occasionally, after only 20, 30, 40 miles, I will find that I have 30 milliliters of oil in here. The only thing I can think is that it somehow has some relationship to idling versus cruising. Because when I'm cruising, the truck runs phenomenally well. The crankcase is always under negative pressure. But when I'm sitting in the In-N-Out Burger drive through line, for example, the truck idles for an extended period of time. And I'm starting to wonder if that long duration of idling is somehow allowing more oil to get into the catch can than when I'm cruising along on the highway. I don't have an answer for that. I'm still trying to kind of wrap my mind around it and see if that is part of the equation or not. Like I say, I am monitoring very closely the oil consumption. I have a thousand mile trip coming up in the next few weeks and I'll report back. But I just wanted to kind of give an overall update for people who are curious kind of where things stand. So that's where things stand. I did add an, a little baffle system in here. There's kind of a, a, a cone, as I remember, that I made here, like a little, the end of a funnel to help the oil not get up there. And then down here, I have a little green material and, a, and an aluminum housing that holds that material right there. So there's a bit of a DMZ or no man's land from here to here as far as the oil goes. but I. I've had that in various forms over the over the last six to nine months, and it doesn't seem to have a large bearing on how much oil. It seems like the key factor has to do with what level of vacuum you're seeing when cruising, and that the, the, the level that seems to be working for me is half an inch of vacuum when cruising along the highway. That seems to be kind of the sweet spot. So not not too much, but not too little. If I start cranking things up and have one or two or three inches of, uh, of vacuum, then this thing goes off the charts. If it's below half an inch of vacuum, then under acceleration, there's simply not enough vacuum present to keep the engine always in a uh, negative pressure state. So that's kind of where things stand. Um, as far as the oil, I I don't think, if you've seen in the previous video, some of the fancy stuff I did with putting baffles in and modifying this, and I, none of that seems to have any bearing. The only other thing I can add here that might be a factor is that I do have the LC engineering uh, oil pump the higher capacity, I believe it is, oil pump, right down there. I also have the rocker arms, the rods that the rocker arms uh, pivot on, which have the additional holes from LC Engineering. And, and part of me is beginning to wonder if maybe either higher volume or pressure of oil being delivered by the oil pump and having more holes to get out here could possibly be swamping the return capability of the hole that allows oil to go from the back of the cylinder head down to the pan. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. At this stage of the game, I don't 
short of you know pulling the motor and or taking the hood off and the valve cover off and drilling a hole down the head and the block to expand that I don't have a lot of ways to test it <clears throat> I will say that the oil crank scraper that I installed in my previous video does not seem to have any bearing either way it may have helped the rings to seal slightly more by reducing the amount of oil on the cylinder walls but but again it's it's difficult to say uh, I have tossed in some uh, a product in the engine in the in the fuel tank called uh, gum out engine tune-up I will say that out of all the stuff I've tried seems to be the best in terms of possibly helping the rings I, I will say that I've used it a couple times and every time I use it I feel like the motor is running better I'm also using sea foam concentrated fuel injector as well as Berryman fuel injector in the engine uh, in the fuel tank that is I've also tried a few of those in directly into the crankcase when I change the oil uh, which has been lately pretty pretty often I will use motor medic the red label one uh, to flush the engine oil out and help flush out the inside of the motor uh, for 10 minutes prior to dumping the oil and replacing it and I feel like that has had a beneficial effect so that's the latest on the Toyota overall the trucks running phenomenally well I, I feel like the amount of oil being utilized is starting to settle down and I and I will say that for a while I thought perhaps the amount of oil the level in the pan could have been a factor due to the counterweights of the crankshaft hitting and stirring up oil I think that is not a factor now and the reason I say that is because I inadvertently added a quart more of oil and had the oil about five millimeters higher than normal on the dipstick and it and it had no bearing either way as far as what was occurring with the oil catch cam so I think the issue of oil ending up in the catch cam is strictly a function of vacuum levels in relationship to crankcase pressure and I'm currently trying to find the absolute sweet spot by adjusting this I will say that some of the green little paint stuff and perhaps the little kind of uh, funnel tip that I made helps but I don't think it helps enough to you know kind of be a yet you know win or lose situation I think it's just kind of it helps a little bit but it's not a major determining factor I, I think the the levels of vacuum uh, when you're cruising along the highway is the determining factor again sometimes I will get uh, an inordinate amount of oil but I think it's related to idling you know in the drive through and stuff so and I'm gonna try to do some tests to confirm that but as far as being able to drive the truck you know four or five hundred miles on the highway it seems like things are kind of working well so I'm going to continue to monitor the, the oil consumption levels. I'm going to continue to monitor the oil catch can. For now, I'm going to run with the idle air control valve totally disabled with duct tape on that little hole and see how things go. I've been getting pretty consistent 20 miles per gallon around town. A little bit of highway, mostly town. On the highway, uh, it, it ranges between you know 24 and 26 miles per gallon uh, depending on you know if I have a tailwind with me or against me sort of thing so anyway that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a little bit of an overall feeling for for where things are on the truck okay uh, that should be it for the update sorry this video ran a little bit long you know all my short videos are always 20 minutes Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about anything uh, relating to oil consumption or the 22 uh, as always, feel free to use the comment selection, uh, section below. Consider subscribing. Uh, I try to answer every single comment on the channel. So if you do have questions or you are struggling with something with your 22RE, uh, I'm more than happy to try to uh, help out.
Okay, thanks again for watching.